three, two, a one. All right. How all right, all right. Doing? How's everybody doing? <laughs> we're doing all right. Doing pretty good. So last week we were not in the studio. We weren't even anywhere near a studio. No. Nope. We were nope. uh, traveling and uh, just ha- Jerry had to take it out on his own. Yeah, it was uh, kind of true. We did a pretty good motorcycle ride and uh, for a few days, and it was tricky getting everything in there last weekend, the newsletter and the Yeah, because we, we were really, like, week. riding every day. It yep. was, like, four, 300, 400 miles. Uh, we're both still kind of walking funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really fun trip. But it was a good good way to get out of the office. I mean, we don't get out of here much, um, you know, for yep. stuff like that. So it was good uh, clearing our head. Hope you guys, you know uh, – understand and it wasn't really a week off but oh yeah we just no, couldn't we, do the podcast the way right, we still right. did everything else that we normally do but the yeah. podcast was too hard it's uh, there's a lot of good info in the you know what i put together the I think, video in the you podcast did. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely so right. anyway but this week crazy you know i say that every week but <laughs> but she's this week i mean it it definitely if you were watching the market like day to day or as you're walking by the TV at work or whatever, you, you couldn't possibly have any idea what's going on. It, it was up and down. It was so volatile. Um, and uh, we're going to get into into some of it. So uh, Wednesday we had that Fed statement, and we'll, we'll talk about it in a minute when we get to it, but we had, we had the, it was the official statement, and then there was a press conference, and uh, the market just went, I mean, crazy. Um, then Friday's jobs report, market flips again going in the other direction. And as we're recording this here at 1030 in the morning on Friday, uh, the market's way up. Who knows by the end of the day where it ends. But uh, we'll talk about that. And then the seasonality chart, we're going to take a look at what – I can't remember if I did this on the on a podcast recently or on the newsletter, but um, it's a picture from the 2024 Stock Traders Almanac and what the, the seasonality would say – uh, the, the corrective periods ought to be during during this uh, election year cycle. And then the 10-year yield, critically important. Um, we'll take a look at that. And then Bitcoin, a lot of, a lot of movement in Bitcoin. We're not going to do a, a short-term chart. It's going to be a long-term chart uh, because there's some really good patterns in there, breakouts that I want to just put out for you guys to kind of walk. It's not just Bitcoin. It could be anything. Those patterns are great. And then um, it's actually, I was going to do this week, the monthly candlestick chart, uh, but I forgot, and I had so much other stuff to talk about, so I'm going to do a, a monthly, weekly, and a daily of the C fund just to get a perspective of where we are with all that. All right, so Wednesday, uh, this is what we look like. Wednesday, let's see, what time was this? I don't know what 14.26 UTC. I don't know if that's... Uh, I don't know if that's East Coast time or what time that is. I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> UTC isn't isn't either. Isn't either. Isn't yeah, either. Yeah, but you'd have to do the math. <laughs> yeah, I, n- I don't want to do math right now. At any rate, this is where we were on Wednesday after the official statement from the Fed. So the Fed comes out and says it was it was a very dovish official statement, um, but the mar- the market didn't really move very much, right? So this is so the Fed comes out at at two o'clock. Uh, the official statement comes out at 2 o'clock. The Fed um, press conference starts at 2.30. So this is where we are at 2 o'clock, or say 2.15. Uh, market didn't move very much. It was a pretty, they call it dovish, right? The Fed, um, in, the, in the official statement, didn't give any, they left the rates the same. They didn't give really any indication that they were interested in raising rates. Um, there was a lot of, uh, reports that came out, CPI and PPI, in the last couple of weeks that came out that were show, showed inflation was increasing. And so there was a fear that the Fed was going to talk, even if they talk about raising rates, uh, it sends the market into turmoil. So in the official statement, they didn't say anything about raising rates, kept rates the same. It was relatively dovish. Then uh, Fed Chairman Powell comes out, and this candle right here, right, is what happened during the press conference. I mean, it went all the way up to above the 20-day moving average line and all the way back down by the end of the day to close lower than it was that day. And it, it was funny because, you know, we're watching Bloomberg during the 
the press conference and all the, the you know the people that were being interviewed dur- during and after the press conference were saying how the market should really like what the Fed was saying because uh, in the press conference a, a ton of questions revolved around what would it take for you to raise rates uh, because the concern is that inflation is, is going up it's not going down we're not getting to that two percent uh, Fed target rate and what would it take for you to raise rates again and he wouldn't he would not go anywhere near that question. He's like, the, we're, we're committed to the 2% uh, target uh, and we're going to be data dependent and, and he just would not go anywhere near there. Um, but he was willing to talk about when they would start reducing rates. So it was a really dovish, he's, he's trying to lower rates. He's not trying to raise rates. And that was the takeaway from the market, which brought it like above the 20-day moving average line during... Um, during the pre- press conference. And then from, this was the, the last, the last like half an hour, it reversed and came all the way back down and closed lower than, than where it opened on the day. Still on that trend line, uh, but pretty amazing. All right, so a lot of people <laughs> either made a lot of money and lost a lot of money day trading uh, on that day. So, and it looks bearish, right? I, I, I don't like all this being below that 20-day moving average line. Obviously, once we got above the 20-day moving average line back here in November, every time we come down here and test it, we get support there, right? And the market keeps moving higher. Um, And then we had this big down day through that 20-day moving average line, and that was the first big red flag of this whole bull market rally, right? And so a red flag is a red flag, that's fine. But the longer you stay below that 20-day moving average line, the more problems you have, the more likely you're going to stay down there and it keeps going down. So you don't want to see, you don't want to see price down here and, and consolidating below that 20 day moving average line. Cause this is potentially what they call a bear flag, right? The first move down, you get some consolidation there and then you get a second move down, right? A lot of people are looking at that and that's what the expectation is. So it's easy to see this trend line and draw it and, and, because your risk here is, is, is low. If you're shorting the market, you can bet that the market's going to go down. If it closes back above that trend line, you, you get out. You cover your shorts. If you think the market's going to go long from here, if it's going to go up and find support at this trend line, um, you can buy it here, right? And if it goes below there, you sell it, you take a little loss, but you're, you're, you expected it to go up. So you're, you, you've identified your risk, and your risk is really small, whether you're going to short the market or go long the market, which is the best way to, to do this. Um, okay, so that's where we were at the end of uh, Wednesday. Then Friday we have, Friday morning, we have a uh, jobs report, right? So this is kind of a summary of it. So non-farm payroll increases by 175,000 uh, jobs. Okay, so that's like the, the high line number. Um, it was a slow darn, so the March number was uh, this 315 was, was actually um, the, it was changed. It was, it was the original expectation was like, um, I don't know, 200 something thousand, came in at 175 and then it got increased uh, to, to 315. But the 175 was lower than the expected 238, right? So the market expected to, 238 for April, it got 175. Um, so fewer jobs were created than they expected. Sounds bad for the economy, but in terms of the Fed being able to lower rates, it's a good thing. Okay, so again, good is bad. Uh, fewer jobs get created than expected, which gives the Fed room to cut rates. Unemployment goes from 3.8 to 3.9. So again, bad for the economy, good for... Uh, the ability for the Fed to lower rates, and that's what everybody <laughs> supposedly is hanging their hat on, is when the Fed's gonna gonna start cutting rates. Um, so what happens on Friday morning after that jobs report comes out? Huge gap up to the upside, right? Who knows if it's gonna if it's gonna hold throughout the day, but that's a direct result of the jobs report um, and people anticipating that the Fed is gonna be able to cut rates by the end of the year. Um, because two days ago, we were talking about, you know, 
everybody's hammering on the Fed. What are the conditions that it would take for you to raise rates because inflation is a problem? T- two days later, you get some, some news, uh, the jobs report, and it flips in a different direction. It's still within that uh, bear flag channel. So, yes, this is, this is great, a gap up through that 20-day moving average line, but we're still in this potential bear flag. And I'm going to talk about that quite a bit in the newsletter this weekend. Okay. Seasonality. So, like I said, I can't remember if I did this chart on a newsletter or on a podcast, but this comes out of the uh, Stock Traders Almanac for this year. And so we're looking at, this is the Dow Jones, but it's close enough to the S&P 500. But it's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, um, the going back to 1901. Okay, so... The first chart is 1901 to 2022, right? So it's the, it's the total total. Um, the second chart is the first half of that century, so 1901 to 1949, and the second one is 1950 to 2022. So the bottom chart in all of these is the, season, is the election cycle, okay, during those years. So what I'm really what I'm trying to point out here, so don't worry about the top, don't worry about this top one. That's uh, all years. So and we're in an election year, so you only have to focus on the bottom chart. So this area right here, whether it's the total, right, all hundred years, the first fifty years or the second fifty years, you get from from April to, to the end of May, beginning of April to the end of May, so basically two months you get either a decline, right, or some kind of churn. And that's what we're in the middle of right now. Um, So after that, right, in all of these, you get a big rally, right, through the summer and uh, into September. And then you have a, a correction going into the election. Okay, so that's kind of the, you know, the, the playbook for the rest of the year. Um, the question right now is, is, so if we are, this was the, the top in March, the market comes down, you know, through April and are we moving higher from here, right? Or are we going to get this bear flag and come down to the end of May and then start moving higher, right? So that's kind of the, the question mark right now. It's entirely possible that the move that we had down so far is it, right? That's the, that's it, and we, we keep moving higher from here. Um, it's also possible that it reverses and we come down and we bottom sometime, you know, late May, early June. Um, but at some point, we should get a breakout to the upside and have a pretty good rally uh, through the summer and into September. That was what the seasonality would tell you. So if, you, if you're looking for a crystal ball, uh, that's one crystal ball that you could <laughs> you could use. But again... There's no way of knowing whether or not, you know, this correction is over. Okay. Ten-year yield. Uh, We've been talking about this a lot. It applies to the F fund, right? So yield and price work inverse to each other. So when yield is moving higher, price is moving lower, right, on the F fund, let's say, because that's our bond fund. So the ten-year yield bottomed back here in 2020. We have a really good Elliott Wave uh, five wave pattern, right? One, two, three, four, five. We hit that five percent top in yield uh, last year in October, and that was also uh, the bottom for the market in October 2023. If you guys remember that, so that was the top in yield. As yield starts falling, the, s- the price of the F fund in this case goes up. And stocks go up because as yield goes down, um, it's ex- uh, especially good for the S fund because any any interest rate sensitive uh, companies get a break when when the yield right the the cost of borrowing goes down. So, in this case, you got five waves up, right for a for a one. This is A B C, is what we would expect from the Elliott wave pattern to happen next. So stocks are under pressure 
from the beginning of the year until you know the the top there in, in March. If yield starts falling, that's the F fund is going to go up because of the math, but the stock fund should also go up. Okay, so on Friday we had a a big down move in yield. Okay, which is a big reason also why the stock funds are going up on Friday. So if yield continues down, the stock funds should continue higher, and the F fund will definitely go higher. Okay. If you break that down a little bit closer, we've done this, again, I can't remember if it was the newsletters or the podcast, I think the newsletters, because I've been really focused on, the, on yield for a while. If, if this is A, B, C for A, and then B, and then a one, two, three, four, five for a C for yield. The the distance, so overall you get an A, B, C. Okay, it's corrective. If you get the distance from the bottom to the top of A is the same distance as the bottom of B to the t to the top of C, right? Then this move and this move are the same length, which is kind of what what you want, it's the symmetry of it you want to see. It's the A, B, C. So the, the distance from here to here is the same as the distance from here to here. And we got right to it. Right? The line's right here. We basically got right to it. We had one day that was above that line. And it looks like on Friday, we got a, a breakdown below that 20-day. So it's very possible, likely now, that yield continues lower, which is good for the F fund and good for the stock funds. Does that make sense? All right. so that's that's the short term. Okay. Bitcoin. So a lot of a lot of talk about Bitcoin. If last was it last weekend? Two weeks ago was the having the the. I think it's been three weeks now. Is it three weeks? Um, definitely not. I don't think what people expected. I, w I I didn't draw the. I should have put the. When Bitcoin halvings were, this is the third one, so I should have put the uh, the other two on this chart. I didn't do it, but at any rate, uh, this is the t this range is the top in Bitcoin right now. We had we had an overshoot right here, but once, I mean, now it's outside of that range to the downside. Bitcoin's not looking very good right now. <laughs> it definitely looks like it wants to go lower, but um, let's do the short term part first. So if this is the most recent low. One, two, three, four, and then it goes higher. That's how I would count Bitcoin. So at some point, because uh, this is definitely this is this is definitely a one two. This this is a an explosive three move. We have this four wave happening, and and we should definitely expect a five move to the upside. Uh, so whenever this this correction gets done, um, I would definitely be looking for a move higher in Bitcoin. What what I wanted to point out. Was these two really good bases that if you were if you were following it you you could have made a, a truckload of money. So this cup and handle, right? Once you once we got above this this high, this high we had this little handle. Once we got above that, um, that was a really low risk entry to get in f into Bitcoin, and we had this explosive move higher, right? We got a really clear support level here. Right, you should be able to see though if you're if you're following along with the podcast, because I, I do this a lot. The support levels um, are really really important. You can it's all the way along, and once we broke through that support level right there, another giant move to the upside. So the the patterns and this one is kind of similar, right? Cup handle, breakout, big move to the upside. Uh, a lot of people say that, that Bitcoin is really easy to trade because it, it follows patterns really, really well. Um, so I would be watching Bitcoin down here, and when you know this four wave completes and we get a break to the upside, I would definitely expect Bitcoin to move higher from here. All right. C fund. So uh, one of the guys I follow, th this is a monthly chart of, of the C fund. Okay, so each one of these uh, rectangles is one month of price movement. So the longer term uh, you're looking at, monthly is, is generally the longest people look at, but the, the monthly trend is the big trend that's happening, right? Anything that's happening in between the month, you know, it's, 
it goes up and down. If you want to look at a monthly chart or a weekly chart or a daily chart, it depends on how close you're going to track the market. So in this case, we're looking at uh, a five five month moving average is that blue line. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty tight moving average line, but in all these really big rallies, long-term rallies, right? Once we got above it here in 2016, the market closed, the month closed right on that line uh, in the third quarter there of 2016. But for the most part, once it got above it in 2016, that five-month moving average line was really useful, right? This is when it closed below it, and we had this little dip for a minute. When we had a big handle below it, that's when the market started moving lower. It, it provides support. It really provides support um, as long as we're above that five-month exponential moving average line. Uh, the market's in good shape. A lot of things can happen in that month, right? A lot of things happened this month. That was April. It was the first down month for a while, but it came right down to support at that uh, five-month moving average line. In May... It opened up right on that line, right? And we've had a lot of volatility so far just in the last, whatever, six days. But as of right now, we're, we're above the line, right? So then if we go to weekly, this is a 20-week moving average line, okay? Same kind of idea, just a different, different moving average. Every time, once we get back above that, 20-week moving average line, every time we come down and hit it, we get support there until we have a big close below it, which was the beginning of the 2022 bear market, right? And then you, you got a bunch of churn as the market's trying to figure out what it wants to do. But once we get above it and stay there and test it, right, it's good until we get a break below it. You don't want to be in the stock funds if you're looking at this on a weekly basis, right, if you're following along on a weekly basis, you want to be in the stock funds when it's above that 20-week moving average line. You don't want to be in it when it's below the 20-week, right? This, a couple weeks ago, was the first time we had a test of that 20-week moving average line since the breakout last November. So, so far, that 20-week moving average line has held as support. All the things that go on in the world, why... This tends to work. I have no idea. But clearly, for three solid weeks, with all the stuff that's been going on, we got support at that 20-week moving average line. Um, if you looked at this yesterday, we would not have this, this big reversal. We were, down, we were at the bottom of it. right? So we'll see what happens by the end of the day. This is not a weekly close, because we're looking at this you know, at 10.30 on Friday morning. But it certainly looks like for the week we're going to finish above that 20-week moving average line. And if you're following along on a weekly basis, as long as we're there, you're still in the stock funds. If you're looking at it on a daily basis, it's the same thing. It's just daily. This is a 20-day moving average line now. Okay? So if you're following it daily, once we get above that 20-day moving average line, you get support all the way along, right? Until this big candle right here. You don't want to be in the stock funds if you're, if you're following it on a daily basis, you don't want to be in the stock funds when we're below that 20-day moving average line. Uh, this is the same chart I put up, put up earlier, but this is concerning, right? Because the longer we stay below that 20-day moving average line, the more likely price moves down. So if Friday stays w well above it, um, especially if next week we can start moving higher, uh, we'd be outside of this uh, we need to get up here somewhere, you know, to really be outside of that uh, bear flag. But so far, it looks pretty good for Friday. Um, so th these are like the guidelines. I mean, I don't know how you can, I don't know how you can manage your TSP without having some kind of guardrails. If you're looking, there there are plenty of people, uh, not plenty. There's a handful of people that think we're in the middle of a, of a monster melt up. Um, this one guy, David Hunter, if you Take a look at him on YouTube. He he's look he's he increased his uh, forecast to like I think seventy five hundred on the S and P by the middle of the summer. Um, so, but there are other people that think we're you know we're the world's getting ready to end. 
and, and there's plenty of evidence for, for the world getting ready to end. And everybody's honest. right. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? Some I, version the, of that, of all that is, is, is right. Yeah. You know, sometimes. The, the, the thing is, it, I was talking about it before, if, if you can make reallocation decisions when there's the least amount of risk, there's the least amount of risk when you can identify what the risk is, right? Because if, if I can draw a line and say, I'm going to get in here, and if it goes below that line, I'm getting out for these reasons. Um, and, I, and I understand I'm going to take that little bit of a loss. But then I'm protecting my downside move. Um, and if I'm, if I'm right and I get in and the market goes up, then great. And it's the same thing on the other side. If, if you get to a top um, and it breaks to the downside in a way that broke through whatever, if you look, whichever trend line you're looking at or, or moving average line, relative strength indicators, any of that, um, that's a low risk time to reallocate to the G fund because if it, if you're wrong and it, uh, it goes the other way, you just get back in, you know, but you can protect your downside. So that's the idea of, of active management. And the biggest thing is, is understanding how often you want to look at the market, right? The weekly tends to be better for most people. Um, uh, but a lot of people certainly like to look at the daily charts. So I would look at all three, which obviously I do. Monthly, weekly, and daily. All right. That is all I got for the week. That was a lot of good stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> As always, um, if you have any questions, you can shoot it to us in the comment section wherever you find this video. We we uh, scroll through the comment sections and try to answer them the best we can. If we miss you, you can always um, send it to support at growmytsp.com, and they forward it to us. And we like that because we can share it on the show maybe and talk about it. And yep, if you've got absolutely. a question, that's usually somebody else's question too. A um, lot of things to think about and, and look at uh, in the next coming weeks. I mean, yep. we're we're at a at a point in the year where, as Jerry has pointed out in several ways, the market can go uh, it can go it can go one of three ways. It can go up, <laughs> down, it can sideways. go sideways, or yeah. it goes down. And uh, sideways sucks. Up and down's better, even though you know we don't want the market to go down. Sometimes it has to. Uh, but if you're watching the show, you're not going to be surprised. And if yeah. you're a member of our site, you're definitely not going to be surprised because we keep you updated every Sunday. Yeah. All right, guys. Hope you have a great week um, coming up, and we will see you next time. Later. <laughs>